Hello, and uh, welcome back to a Learn Masters series with Morten Goodwin on AI. This is our fourth lecture, our fourth chat, and the topic of this fourth session will be a workshop, a play, play shop, really, oh, uh, exactly. where we are sandboxing AI in Learn. Mm -hmm. So I have um, my own company that I need right. to worry about. And as we've heard, AI is useful for any company, any industry, any function. So we are basically going to try to do uh, a 15 minute exploration of what can AI do for learn and where do I start? How do I get this going? And what I'm hoping for is that the audience, as they hear me discussing this with Morten, think about their own company, mm -hmm. their own uh, function and uh, try to think about what would this mean for them. Sounds good? That sounds excellent, exactly. Because I think uh, when uh, you start with your own ideas, where you're expert on, in this case, your learning environment, that's where you see the potential, I think. And that's what most people should do. They should see this is the area I really know. If I want to do AI on this one, this my area, then uh, it's no better place to start. Sounds perfect. So I have to also admit that uh, Morten and I have spoken quite a bit about Understood, where we should yes. use the AI oh, yeah. in Learn. But I'm going to start from scratch now. And I, I say, Morten, lovely seeing you. I haven't seen you for a couple of years. I have this company called Learn. Mm -hmm. It does corporate education uh, in digital formats. Uh, we are trying to get as many people as possible to listen to the educational content we put out there. Mm -hmm. I would love to use AI. What 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 are your thoughts? Where do I start? Well, uh, so uh, my head's, head is filled with thoughts, I think, uh, of possibilities. Uh, and I think the first one to think of is, is what problem is it that you're really trying to solve? And then kind of delve down into it. And one problem to solve is kind of uh, could be to more specialize the content to each person. So meaning that if I go to learn, I may be interested in some parts technology parts probably, but maybe some other parts as well. Some other people may be interested in uh, uh, political uh, issues, health issues, etc. So in, I would say that at least what comes very naturally is to say, uh, uh, similar to how Netflix and YouTube and Facebook all use AI to specialize content, we have never really seen that to a good level, at least a satisfactory level in education. So when I teach my students, I teach uh, a couple of hundreds of students at the same time, but I really, really know that they're individuals and they need the content differently produced, differently provided. Uh, and I think that is exactly where, at least one of those key areas where uh, you could use AI uh, in learn. So when if I go as a completely new student to a learn system, I would say that uh, I would maybe first give a bit of my interests. I'm interested in computer science, this, 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 and then the AI system could uh, filter out some some parts. Uh, that's relatively easy. But as you go along, you can maybe collect a bit data on uh, how am I, what am I clicking on, how long am I watching a video? Am I just watching the first two minutes or the entire video? Uh, am I scrolling a lot across some videos I never click on? These type of things. <laughs> and it tells you a lot about the behavior of the students. <laughs> Maybe without them really knowing that you're collecting data. Of course, you should tell them, but uh, it's not so obvious. And then you can understand the patterns, uh, understand from the patterns what each person's preference is, both in content, but also in learning style. Some people are better learners uh, by reading. Some people are better learning uh, listening. Some people are better learning in collaboration. And But in most cases, it's a little bit of each, uh, probably. So meaning that if you watch a video, maybe there's time to discuss it with some other person. If you discussed for some time, maybe it's good to get some new content in there. And so, that is... so if I'm breaking this down yes, now, please do. um, basically you started from an understanding that you have from before mm -hmm. uh, on uh, our business model. Yes. And I remember you and I discussing that. So because I remember you were asking me, well, you know, but 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 what's your business model? What's your mm -hmm. what's your ambition? Where do you want to go? Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to basically have growth in two areas. One is traffic, visibility. We want more people to see our great content. Yeah. 
And then the second thing we really want is also more effect of our content. Yes. So we want to see that they are really learning more. We want to see that people are getting out of their echo chamber and learning new areas because the future mm -hmm. is very cl cr cross-functional and complex. Yep. We want to see that they learn something every day. We want to see that they learn in different modes, you know, sometimes podcasts, sometimes a quiz, mm -hmm. sometimes a video. So it's about driving these things. And then I remember you were asking me, the other question is, and where are you unique? You know, mm -hmm. what are what can yeah. you use that is unique to you that will also give you some unique data? And we have this, our unique strengths are um, this library of a thousand mm -hmm. cases of innovation Absolutely. Yeah. And and subscribers. Mm -hmm. and our past traffic. We also have companies that want to come to us and make a series, tailored series of innovation. So again, we have some unique content that is very tailored, but relevant for their whole industry, right? So there's something unique about the content, really. That's the, that's the thing now. And so then I remember you were asking me, uh, okay, so how do you gather data that can help mm -hmm. you drive yeah, this? Yes, exactly. And that's, yes. you know, we can have student data, which we talked about now as well mm -hmm. so you were talking about um you know how often is every person in the system what do they learn um what's their background how, so so this we can combine mm -hmm. to, to then create these personalized learning paths we can group students in learning yes co co collaborative groups we can use this uh, i think you were suggesting to me also to think about um uh optimizing the or finding a way to measure the learning experience and optimizing it in some sort of a dashboardy way which is which would be probably so these are the student things and we can sure. dive further into this mm -hmm. and then another area that we dived into before in this workshop is a um text or content yes so right. you know we have so Coursera has a lot of content, mm -hmm. but when you search for something, you can search for AI or, but it's, it's basically not structured very much, mm -hmm. you know? And so you were asking me, well, if I want to learn about um, uh, earthquakes mm -hmm. and building uh, technology, yep. do you have anything for me? And I'm like, well, I have building technology, but I haven't tagged anything on earthquakes. So mm -hmm. you were saying, well, maybe you could find AI useful to tag your content, yes. to look for sentiment, to mm -hmm. look for clusters. So let's 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 look at two areas separately yep. here. So one is how do we help students? The other one is how do we make most of our content? That's true. Uh, yeah, it's a, I think it's a good division. So uh, as you exactly say, one is to guide the student in some correct way, and the other is kind of content-wise the systemizing of the uh, of your uh, platform. Uh, and I think. Uh, so uh, at least when you speak now, what uh, immediately comes to mind is, for example, automatic transcription of this video, this podcast, for example, would be quite easily done with uh, AI, meaning whatever we talk about, um, it's impossible to think, uh, or at least very impractical to think that somebody should tag absolutely everything. It's way too much work. AI could do that. Whatever I say, whatever I'm saying exactly now could be like transcribed and then categorized, etc. And that means that probably through interaction with students, but uh, you can say that this content is similar to this content, meaning that if you're interested in earthquakes, maybe you're interested in tornadoes also because it's has some sort of similarity. Or if you're interested in earthquakes, maybe you're interested in uh, agriculture because that's somehow related. <laughs> and and then you can see both just word-wise, which is what is similar, because earthquake has a synonym with disaster, which is a synonym again with uh, with tornado. But you can also say what are people really watching at the same time. So a person that is an expert in disasters will maybe uh, search for both of them at the same time. And then you say, oh, these are accessed at the same time. Probably there's some sort of grouping there. And uh, and for that part, you could use unsupervised learning, meaning that you don't have to uh, have a guidance to say this is correct, this is correct, this is correct, this is wrong, but saying that uh, this uh, information material, this information material uh, is used at the same time. They're probably in the same uh, general area but these are also used in the same time but differently from the first so they are probably uh, have some sort of relation 
of course, you can do this all manually, but that's very, very uh, tough <laughs> to do, I think. Uh, so, can so, I just so this... ask you one more question? Because this particular conversation is in English. Yeah. But 90% uh, of the content that we've created on Learn is in Norwegian. That's is true. there anyone in Norway? Yeah. We talked about this before, but I yeah, want yeah. you to, to, to tell fine. us. <laughs> uh, really good groups that are good at doing this stuff in Norwegian. Yeah. So, uh, uh, absolutely. So, we... Uh, in the previous uh, podcast, we talked about the English version BERT, which has a sort of language model. And for a long time, uh, uh, AI was limited to English and some other big international languages, fr French and Spanish, etc. Uh, but uh, uh, now there's something called NURBERT, which is the Norwegian version of BERT, uh, trained by University of Oslo mostly, and some other collaborators. Lilia Øverlid is uh, leading that one, a very talented and intelligent professor at the University of Oslo. And this library is publicly available. You can use it. You don't have to contact Oslo. You can just use it, <laughs> download it. But yeah, a little bit of programming experience, uh, of course. But uh, And then you can automatically tag, uh, systemize, uh, and um, transcribe videos. Uh, I would say near, uh, near as good as you can do in, in, in English. So it's... Um, an amazing opportunity, which I think most people are not aware of. Uh, but the and when we say Norwegian, it's um, uh, Norwegian not only Bukmol but also Nynorsk, the Sami languages. I'm not sure how you you learn content in any of that, but that's a possibility if you want to do do it this way. Uh, but, but so the, it's very interesting, and and basically, I think that also Lilia would be interested in getting her hands on even more good training. I'm sure she is. So uh, if people have a lot of really good content in Norwegian, mm -hmm. there might be a very good collaboration opportunity for research as well. And that's what, as, as a researcher, I would say probably yes, because that's kind of the thing we're always looking at. So where can I get data? Where can I solve a new interesting problem that hasn't been solved yet? And I would say that, uh, yes, uh, both the language group in Oslo, uh, led by Lilia, and I would say also the pedagogic group, technology pedagogic groups in Oslo, but other places also, would probably be a good fit, because it is it is this interdisciplinary uh, world you're talking about. <laughs> it's a... A lot about technology, absolutely, uh, but there's also about language, uh, which is very related to technology, AI, and there's but there's also about finding what is the best educational path, for example, which is s s very related to technology, but not the same. So uh, I think uh, it probably boils down to uh, w uh, what is it you're solving? What is your business model? What are you unique? <laughs> and where does, where can the technology really support it in a way? That, yeah. And I think, yes, exactly. And, and, and I think you should also, at least uh, you should do what you want, but I, I would recommend to have a kind of a iterative process on it because when you first develop something, it will work some sometimes but not always <laughs> and whenever you have something doesn't work you should have some sort of reinforcement mechanism saying that ah when i searched for earthquakes i got uh, cookie recipes this is not really yeah. for me so uh, wrong <laughs> and then let yeah. that feedback into it two more minutes martin yes please. and what i want to ask you there is you know so you had also this idea of anomalies yeah and um both in students learning, but also in content, or yeah. we, even the idea of rating, you know, so it's cross connecting the data, we yeah. could see which content gets used most, which content gets people to drop off at yeah. a certain point, AI could give us some ideas that are across these two topics as well. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, absolutely. So uh, anomalies is a very interesting uh, way to think of it. Uh, and the reason is that you don't really need to say this is a good student, this is a bad student, this is a talented person, this is not, or this is a good content or bad content. You just look at the content and say, here is something that is a bit different from the uh, system in general. So you can say that maybe that is someone who has different experience that you, that you expect, different background. And maybe you should he or she should be put in another learning area, uh, or it could be some with some person with a learning disability, for example, that should be detected early on, ideally. But uh, but it's also going to be content that falls out of place. Maybe it's a uh, uh, I don't know AI talk, but you talk too much about I don't know viruses or whatever. So this type of thing, there's a lot of these type of anomalies that are very useful to detect, and and especially when. Uh, you have a lot of data and the data is a bit skewed, uh, meaning that have, let's say most of it works perfectly, but there's like 
five percent that doesn't <laughs> and in disease prediction or uh, emergency management this is often the case uh, and i think in learning as well <laughs> so we have this majority of the data follows the major trend but a few data points don't and those are maybe the ones that are interesting and you want to improve upon so anomaly detection is central i think so if I'm summarizing what you have been basically playing with now mm -hmm. and before with me, you ask, understand your problem and your goals, yes. hey. understand your uniqueness and your strengths. Mm -hmm. Based on this, create some hypothesis of how you want to drive this and then figure out how to get data to, yes. to, to, to support that. And from there on, you can get help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, you, or you can develop yourself. Yes, but understand the problem, understand the, the data you have, and at least... Uh, then uh, when you talk to some uh, AI experts, if you want to do that, then your uh, conversation will be much, much more meaningful because those are the questions they will ask. They will ask, what are you trying to solve? Do you have data? And if you already have the answer, you're spending your consultancy money much, much, much better, I think, because you know it there. Very good. Morten Goodwin, thank you so much thank for you. inspiring us to learn oh. more about AI over this chat. It has been a pleasure. Thank you.